<laughs> I've never done this before. <laughs> but if you were hoping that there would be a local village witch who was going to read a poem about homosexual sex, you got your wish! <laughs> As a woman who loves women, I have often struggled to come to an understanding with how I relate to men in a world where I am not available to them, how to earn their approval without having to take off my clothes, and the conclusion I came to was that if masculinity could become currency, then I could unresol unresolvedly play their game of conquests. And so exchanging stories of sex as casually as I could muster, I can sit with boys who will never know me with the lights off and count my sexual triumphs on both hands and feet and boast that I've got more pussy than they have. And I will sit the way they sit, with legs spread, unapologetic about the space they take up, and I become the chill girl who they admire and respect, the girl who likes tits and ass and who they can't reject. And in this moment, I don't see the objectification, only gratification, that I have reached a level where I am worth more than my lowly femininity. I indulge them in the explicit detail of how my lust left, lo left lipstick stains at the meeting of my lover's thighs. These girls looked at me with fire in their eyes, and I wanted them to set me ablaze. So I tell them how I found salvation in the bodies of bi-curious babes with booze on their breath, but do not admit that these tribulations were my damnation, how the emotional vacancies of these intimacies never left, never filled the emptiness, only left me with limped wrists and swollen lips, how orgasm never culminated in I love you's, my promiscuity is only valuable when I adopt the bro agenda and adapt it to the liking of my male counterparts who don't really care about the girls I fucked, the way they made my name sound in their voices, slamming the vowels together, how I wanted to know these girls like some of my favorite books wanted to bend the corners of their pages and crack their spines. Always, these green-eyed girls. I didn't want to give up on them, but I knew that I would have to so they could go back to their boyfriends who had neck beards and drove shitty Toyotas. <laughs> Retelling the summers I spent on my back, I don't include the romantic details to the boys who live by the mantra of fuck bitches, get money. Woo! They just want to hear some pornographic fantasy come to life and in return I can reduce myself to the same misogynistic fuckboy antics to earn the approval of guys who wear basketball shorts in November <laughs> and smell like Axe body spray and Cheetos, the twisted bonding mechanism that contradicts my feminist politics is still equipped in late night spaces between straight boys and a confused queer girl who doesn't want her desires for women to become the same game of objectification that has become standard. And so as a woman who loves women, I stand here admitting my guilt and telling every straight dude that has ever asked me about my sex life, you can have your bad lesbian porn and mediocrity. I'm done entertaining your fantasies.